Hey everybody, Dustin Schmidt back here again today, and I've got something kind of fun today. Uh, or it could be maybe one of the dumbest things I've put together. Um, either way, I hope it's going to be entertaining, and let me show you what that is. So, I put together a new cinema camera. The Fuji X100V. Um, why would anyone do this? I don't know. But I thought it could be fun. So let's talk about what's going on here and then we'll shoot some footage and I'll show you that. And really this is more of a uh, creative exercise than anything that I would recommend someone actually goes out and does. But we are gonna see what the Fuji X100V's video quality can do, really. So let's talk about the rig and then we'll shoot some stuff with it. And then we'll come back and talk about what we learned. So. Here on the rig, what do we have to do to turn the X100V into a cinema camera? Uh, because it's not, right? It is a, it's not even a, a hybrid mirrorless camera. It's a little point and shoot kind of camera. Uh, and it's one of my favorite point and shoot cameras and I've got a whole other video about that. But because I have a history with shooting Fuji stuff, I actually had some GAC kind of laying around in terms of like battery adapters and things like that. Um, that allowed me to put this together. I also have a bunch of extra junk, you know, all the little peripheral stuff that you need to cobble together a rig like this. So, first off, the X100V is right in here. There you can see the little flip up screen. So, it is in there. It's buried in there, you know, amongst many things, but it's in there. So, I need to get it into a cage. Uh, to make this whole thing work. I've got a lot of cages over the years from, you know, the many years of shooting mirrorless uh, DSLR stuff. Uh, I have a old school wooden camera universal cage here. Um, and I forget the exact name for it, but uh, it's the one that has the uh, 15 mil rod on the side that kind of holds the two upper half and bottom half together and allows you to adjust the, the height to some, some respect and also to do some horizontal um, travel. And that's what I have on it and that's what the X100V is sitting in. That's kind of allowing me to build the rest of this stuff on it. Um, to power the X100V, I've got a, a DTAP to Fuji battery adapter in there. So again, maybe if I take this off, you can't really see that on there, can you? Hmm, let's see here. There we go. Now you can kind of see it out. So there it is. There's our camera. And there's our battery adapter running into it. And you can see how that's kind of all sitting in there. I got a couple other things, cables and things running into this to, to do what we need to. But that just snaps into the dovetail here. This is like an airy style dovetail that's sitting on a riser for 15 mil rods. It's allowing us to attach our mat box and then all of that clamping onto um, what is just my VCT shoulder setup that I could use on a lot of cameras and uh, you can see you can use it for this too. Uh, I've got a D-tap running into it from a V-mount battery here and the reason I've got the mat box is because when we take this outside, you'll see, we need to be able to apply ND to it. And I've just got the, uh, I think what's called their, their black hole, it's kind of their rubber. Um, you know, you put it on any lenses that you can't do a clamp on, and allows you to adapt and, and keep stray light from coming into your matte box. So that's what I've got the lens poking through right there. You can see it's not even centered actually, um, because this, this body of the X100V is kind of a range finder body style, the lens is a little bit off from, from center. So, but it works just fine for what we need here. So that's allowing me to attach all the different things that we have. I've got a top handle on top here. I've got a small HD 702 touch up here, you can see. It's getting a feed from the micro HDMI on the side, and I've got a micro HDMI to full size HDMI uh, feeding into this. And that's giving us the, the camera signal. 
Uh, I've also got audio coming out of this. The audio jack on the X100V is not a full size three and a half mil. I think it's a two and a half. So you have to get a little two and a half to three and a half mil adapter, which is that. And that's what I have running up to a Tascam. Little task cam adapter, if you can see it. There it is. And this is the task cam adapter for the R5C, but basically all it is is a preamp that runs off AA battery power. And I'm plugging, running our audio into that. And then coming off of that, I've got a phantom powered uh, Sennheiser MKH8060, which is a great little shotgun mic. Um, so essentially, I've got a full rig here. Um, the X100V also allows you to fully manually control the video. So that's what we're gonna do. We've got it set to F-Log, which is their log picture profile, um, 4K, 2398, um, F2, and shutter speed of a 48th, so just kind of double on that uh, frame rate. And ISO 800, which is the native ISO in F-Log for this camera, and so that's why we need the, the ND filters for when we go outside. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else I'm missing here. Uh, manual focus is a little bit out <laughs> because of how close this matte box is. I can't really get to the focus ring. So that's why I've tried to leave this, uh, this screen accessible on the back so that we can touch the focus where we want. Uh, the X100V actually has uh, a little tiny built-in ND filter in it. Uh, it's great for stills would get us some of the way of where we needed to go outside, but I, I've decided to remove that from the equation and just use the map box and use some fixed uh, ND filters in there. So that is the ridiculous Frankenstein setup of the X100V. Uh, let's go see what it looks like, huh? Okay, so we're outside. Um, I'm actually at 640 ISO. I believe that is the native ISO of Fuji F-Log. I haven't shot Fuji in a while. So it's kind of hard to say. I had to do a little uh, internet sleuthing. Um, the audio is just coming through the Sennheiser MKH8060 into the Tascam and then direct into the Fuji. I turned the, the internal audio on the Fuji all the way down. So you can see how that sounds. Um, I've got the just set on auto for the, the audio on the Tascam uh, with the limiters engaged. So, but we're just outside. So. You know, the mic's probably this close. I can touch it with my hand right here. So pretty close, probably close enough to get a pretty good uh, signal to noise ratio, but um, you can get a sense of the picture. I'm just kind of out here in my backyard, a uh, little bit cloudy today, um, not getting some bright, bright sun. Actually, the sun's just starting to peek out behind the clouds now. So I think you can start to see it. Um, but we're doing a pretty good job. We're holding, holding the background. If I had something to soften the light here, um, maybe put some neg up here, it could be a pretty nice picture. So not too bad, really. So now that we've had a chance to see just what this looks like in general outside, uh, throw in a couple more B-roll clips, and I think we'll take it back inside and I wanna do a little more control test with some controlled lighting. Um, and we'll treat this camera like an interview camera and we'll run a shotgun mic into it um, and, and light it and do all that stuff. So let's go check it out. Oh, 
one more thing you know the autofocus on this is what I'm working with right now I've got it on uh, continuous autofocus and on eye tracking um, I think it does it does a decent job the thing with the Fuji's is they're a little twitchy so I think what you'll probably notice is that the uh, even though it's grabbing and catching the eye and I can see the box lighting up on there um, it's just a little pulsy and that's kind of the the caveat to a lot of these so a lot of these Fuji's anyway and some of these you know autofocus systems that aren't as good as the Sony's and the Canons of the world but we'll take it back inside and we'll set it up and we'll try to treat it more like an interview setting uh, maybe switch over to the manual so we're not getting that twitchy pulsy thing and you know boom the mic out appropriately and just see how it looks when we light it and and treat it more like a an interview setup so let's go check it out okay we're back inside now we are in our fuji x100v uh, interview setup if you want to call it that we have brought in some professional lighting i've got some led lights that are on in various places to you know kind of help light this set um, we have our professional audio just above me i've got a, a sennheiser uh, 416 you know very standard classic kind of a shotgun mic for audio um, that is running into the task cam uh, the same task cam adapter that you saw earlier outside um, have un unplugged the the 8060 uh, sennheiser that's kind of more of that run and gun mic and now i'm using this other one so this is the look for it so you can you get to hear the audio going in and again the audio is dialed all the way down on the x100v and we're using the task cam as our preamp um, we've got a good mic but you can kind of see what this looks like now we've got good audio good picture good lighting how does it look compared to what we were seeing on the komodo right the komodo is a very you know pretty high-end cinema camera um, and here we are on just this tiny little mirrorless fuji so the picture quality i think is is probably not going to be that far off when you're looking at these two so that's what's really interesting and it, it was never in doubt i think that you could get a nice well-lit interview uh, picture out of both cameras or any camera for that matter right now um, if the lighting's good if the audio is good um, the framing is good all that kind of stuff um, there's a lot of capable cameras so just thought there was a this was a fun little exercise to use this camera in this way uh, a lot of things it does not do well um, I am using the uh, autofocus here again so I can see it tracking my face and the monitor here I can see it locking onto the eye um, are we getting that pulsing um, will be an interesting thing to see I'm not can't really see that on the monitor right now but I think we'll see it in the full-size video when I go to edit um, not in in manual I think we're just gonna let it do its thing here and uh, yeah this is it so we're in f2 and uh, yeah kind of fun all right